happy to see you this morning, and it's so good to see a number of uh, newer folks here. You've been invited by a friend or family member, and you are our honored guest today. We'd like to just begin by having everybody stand up and talk to two or three people that you're not sure you know their name. Uh, and members, you need to lead out and what, you want to shake hands.
this morning. Um, as you know, today is uh, Veterans Day, and so uh, I want to just take one uh, quick moment to recognize all the veterans uh, that we have. I know that there are many in the congregation this morning, and so if you're a veteran, would you stand so that we can recognize all the veterans if you're able to stand? <laughs> And, uh, you, you know, it's not just the veterans that uh, serve in the service, but, of course, their families that serve alongside of them. And uh, it, it takes a great sacrifice from not only uh, them, but uh, also their families, uh, their loved ones, and their children, uh, and everything else. And so, uh, also, if you didn't know, today is the 100th anniversary of the signing of the armistice that ended World War I. Uh, and so, uh, it's amazing how time goes by, isn't it? Uh, they signed that on, October, on November 11th at 11 o'clock uh, in 1918. Um, so uh, that happened today uh, in history. So uh, as we go to prayer this morning, uh, let's re remember Mariah uh, Boozy. Uh, and she is still in the hospital uh, with a lot of issues going on there. And so let's lift her up in a prayer. Continue to remember our country. Uh, as a lot of things are going on uh, across the country. And of course, we still have a, a lot of issues uh, with one another, and, and just pain and, and agony and things going on, a lot of unspoken requests, and, and so let's just remember each other in this uh, in this day, okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our great God and Father, we just uh, thank you that you are a great and awesome God, that you have given this country so much, so many great blessings, so many great people have served it, so many have sacrificed so much. And you have continued to pour out and to give, and we just thank you for the opportunity to serve you and to serve in a mighty way. And Lord, as we continue to look to you for your guidance and your direction, as we continue to look forward to the things that you would have us to do, Lord, we cry out and we just are broken. We are heartbroken over Mariah as she is still in the hospital and Lord we know that your hand is with her and with her family. Lord we, we are heartbroken over other brothers and sisters in our family, our church family that have their different issues and struggles. Uh, Lord we know that you are an awesome and mighty God and we just want everything to be perfect, but Lord, we know that your glory and your honor and your praise is what is most important. And Lord, as we seek to walk down the path that you have set before us, may we do that with gladness in our hearts. As we walk through these trials and tribulations together, may we always be focused upon you. As we come together to strengthen one another, to rejoice together, to walk in the suffering together. May we remember, Lord, that you are right there beside us, giving us the guidance and the direction that we need. Whether it's in national issues or local issues or just right here in this church family. Whatever it is, Lord, we want to give you praise, glory, and honor. Lord, as we hear the message from the pastor this morning, may our hearts receive it with joy and gladness and Lord, as we depart from this place and fellowship with food and joy, we just thank you so much for all that you have done for us in this year. We look forward to the years to come. In your great precious holy name, amen. Second to tell everyone, next week we are also continuing on with our Thanksgiving theme and the choir will be leading the worship, the first part of the service, and it's going to be a audience participation type of thing. So you want to come, you don't have to study, just show up, and it'll be a wonderful time. We'll have, a, we'll have some other instruments. There's some neat things happening next week. So mark it on your calendars. Good time to invite your neighbors or friends or relatives that maybe ordinarily don't come. Try to get them to come with you, and it'll be a good time next week. Let's continue with our service. 350, the Church is One Foundation. Yeah. 
stand for our offering. 138 at Cal. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Father, we just love you. We worship you for who you are. Father, we know that we have needs. There's no one in this building today that doesn't need you for something. Father, the main thing about loving you is understanding that he'll be there for you. Father, just be with us. And Father, it's just a wonderful thing today that we're going to have a fellowship. Have a wonderful lunch. And Father, we do thank you for the ladies that are back there working that put this on. And they've been, they've been here all week. Father, we just thank you for them. And Father, as we make this collection today, we pray that you will honor the gift and bless the gift.
Well, if you've looked at the menu, it's supposed to be a trio. Well, John, Michael is not up to singing this morning, so you get a third of the trio. <laughs> Some years ago, my quartet was singing down around the lake, and a fellow came up to me and said, I want to send you some song poems. And so I said, okay. So when I got them, I didn't think very much of them. So I filed them away. A couple of three years later, I was going through a bunch of stuff, and I found that letter. And I found the words to this song. I thought, how could I have overlooked such a song? So I took the music to it. And uh, I was trying to date, I was going to sing a Thanksgiving song or this one. And then I saw our assistant pastor <coughs> walk in with that uniform on. So I'm singing this song. It's called America, Our USA. This is our country, our native land. For which it stands, for righteousness and liberty, with equal rights for you and me. This is America, our USA. This is our country, its beauty reigns from its wide ocean.
triggered this out crystal because of Ted driving. I'm just kidding about that. <laughs> Ted was driving. Eight people were at the church last Sunday. Eight people. Uh, that's, you know, no, I'm just kidding. You know, how many are here is not the important thing. What is important is what we do when we are here. That's the important thing. And I've got a simple sermon uh, today. I, I didn't say it was short. But you know what? <laughs> One thing uh, that John is thankful for is no, no Bible will be thrown in his face today. Because there were 95 in Sunday school, but 95 is good, amen? amen. But uh, it, it, I don't know if the official count is in. We'll find out at the end of the service with everybody everywhere where they are having here, uh, here during this hour. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is that you are here right now. God has a a reason for us all to be here right now. This is a great season of the year. I love it when uh, the leaves fall. By the way, I have a philosophy about leaves falling. In my yard, they will all fall before I pick one of them up. I just can't go after them day after day. That's just me. And then I might not pick them up anyway. If you want to bid on my leaves, I'll talk to you, you know. Uh, I'll be glad to pay somebody to pick them up. But anyway, it's a great time of the year. The holidays, Thanksgiving, we're with each other. Uh, it, people just kind of get a little more upbeat oftentimes at this time of the year. So I just want to think about this word for a moment. Thankful. Thankful. Would you just try to wrap your heads, your hearts around that word for a moment? Thankful. First Thessalonians 5, 17 says, well, that's the wrong verse. I'm sorry. It's verse 18, I think. I made the wrong verse. My mistake. Verse 18 says, Frank, continue. That's a good verse. That's, that's my mistake. But the next verse says, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for all of you in Christ Jesus. In another translation it says, in everything, give thanks. Crystal, in everything. Give thanks. Last week at this time, it wasn't easy to give thanks. <coughs> Instead, it was a cry out to God like we talked about in Bible study this morning. In everything, give thanks. Well, I, I want to put that in perspective for just a moment. Let's just imagine for a moment it's the end of your life. You're on what you, the doctors have told you, is your deathbed. You're not going to get well. But you still have your mind. And isn't that a wonderful thing to have? And, and when all is said and done, at the end of your life, what will you be most thankful for? Let me tell you what it won't be. It won't be your bank balance. Because what difference does it make then? Well, it'll make a difference to your children, maybe your grandchildren, but to you it makes no difference whatsoever. It won't be the career and that you can still wear your uniform after you're retired, like our associate pastor Jonathan uh, is wearing his uniform. It won't be your boat. It won't be your cars. I, I, I read something the other day and had a list of what was the favorite car for every year back to like 19... I don't know when the car starts, 17 or something like that. It won't be your antique car. It won't be your favorite car. It won't be your current car. It won't be your, your house. Some of you have had an opportunity to build your dream house. I remember when my wife and I, we built a couple of houses, haven't we, hon? And uh, I remember when we built our dream house. It was in North Carolina. I think besides that one was Baltimore. One of the nicest houses 
We were able to design it ourselves. God provided so we could pay the monthly mortgage. But you know what? That wasn't really our house. That was just a house that God let us use for a little while. Because whatever house you're in right now, even if it's the place you grew up, it's just a house. It's a temporary dwelling. It won't be your house that's most important. It won't be your closet full of clothes. It won't be, for some of you, your expensive toys. It won't be your favorite sports team. It won't be anything that you can put your hands on specifically. At the end of your life, what will you say you're most thankful for. I want to look at a couple of scriptures here. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 is a fact of life that we all must face at one time or another. And this is it. Just as man is destined to die once, and after this, the judgment. The Bible says it like this in one translation. As it is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. This is what's going to happen. It's a guarantee that if Jesus doesn't come first, we are all going to die. And then, the second guarantee is that we will all stand before God. Some of you have seen the sign as you come in the sanctuary this way, and it says, if Jesus was to ask you, why should I let you into my heaven, what would you say? I think we might be asked that question when we get to heaven. Of course, actually, if we're there, we knew the answer. But if you're not sure, and if you're wondering what you would say if Jesus was to ask you, why should I let you into my heaven, what would you say? I'll tell you what you'd have to say. You'd have to say, I place my faith in Jesus. It's all about His grace. <laughs> It's all about what God did for us and not what we did for God. As a 12-year-old boy, my, my sister invited me out to a, a youth meeting and I went for hamburgers and girls and I found Jesus that night because I placed my faith and trust in Jesus as my only hope for heaven. And if you're sitting here today and somebody who loves you or, or wanted to invite you, I hope they love you if they invited you, brought you here today, one of the reasons they brought you here is they want you to know that Jesus can be your Savior too. Amen. Psalms 34 verse 9. Psalms 34 verse 9. Fear the Lord, you who saints, those who, who, who fear Him, lack, lack for nothing. Uh, we, we need to be prepared, folks. Prepared. Ready. Why should we fear God? Because God's the only one who left us into heaven. God is the one who is our judge. James 4, 13 and 14. Listen. Listen. Now when God says listen, he means listen. Listen, you say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and, and we will buy and we will sell and, and we will get gain and we'll carry on business and we'll make money. Those of you that have your plans laid out for tomorrow, God can change your plans. You don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. For what is your life? I want to tell you what your life is. What my life is. Your life and my life is a vapor. It's a puff of smoke. It's a mist. It appears for a little time. And then... It vanishes away. What is your life? And when you think about what is your life, think about this life is not forever. Our life in heaven is forever. Our life with Jesus is forever. And you can have that forever life. Now I know many of you do. <clears throat> many of you are here Sunday after Sunday. And, and not only that, I'm so thankful for the, every one of you come on Sunday morning and, and then those who come back on Sunday night to get a second helping of God's Word, a different message. And then on Wednesday night, I especially appreciate all of my 
a lot of workers in this church that take care of the little stop jobs on, I mean, little people on, on Wednesday night. And I appreciate our, our associate pastor who works with our teenagers and and, and, and things are, are, are really good there. They're getting ready to have a, a family hayride with the, the teenagers and their families. If your teenager hasn't invited you, they're supposed to. That'll be a, a next week. Coming Friday night, yeah. Be ready. So what are what are three things that are common in most humans? Now, now I'm not talking about fried chicken and potato salad. Although they're usually there after the funeral. <laughs> Tony Campolo one time said that. The bottom line is, after after you're dead and gone, they put you in the ground, they're going to go back to the church and eat fried chicken and potato salad, and what are they going to say about you? Somebody once said, uh, we ought to live our lives in such a way that the preacher doesn't have to stand up and lie about us at, at our own funeral. That's kind of interesting. Let me tell you what's most important. Number one, Maybe not in not in maybe not in priority order, but three things that are common at most funerals are family. Family. <coughs> family is so important. And you know, I even see this this morning as some of you brought your your father or your sister or your your brother or your your son or your I brought my granddaughter. You'll get to meet her later uh, if you say for lunch. She'll be all over the place, I'm quite certain. Uh, you brought somebody with you today. You may have brought, brought a, a family member. You may have brought someone else. Galatians 3.26 tells us that we can all be family members. It says, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Don't let anyone tell you that the whole world, that everybody in the world is a child of God. That is not the truth of God's word. Everybody in the world is not a child of God. In fact, until you come to faith in Christ Jesus, you are not a child of God. You're a child of the world. We all have humankind in common, but we only have a Heavenly Father in common when we come to faith in Christ Jesus. But family is important. What One of the reasons that my wife and I drive down to Springfield so often, and we do about a couple of times a month, is because of family. Family is important. And the church family is important. <coughs> and at a time like Crystal's accident, your, your church family became even more important to you, knowing that this body of believers was going to love you and hug you you did miss how you're supposed to hug. I had a demonstration last week. And how you're supposed to... The, the holy gifts, if you didn't get that, you, you need to watch the video and you can find out. But family is important. Would you say amen to that? Amen. So spend time with your family. Dads, if you're so busy at work trying to provide for your family and you never spend any time with them, you need to back off of work a little bit and spend more time with your family. The next thing that people are going to talk about that's going to be common at most people's funerals are friends. Friends. Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Friends. How many friends do you have? Somebody said it. A person is a lucky, I, I don't know who said this, but and I don't believe in luck, but maybe we'll use the word blessed. You are blessed if you have five friends. Well, you're supposed to have six, actually, to carry your casket, okay? And, and, and that, nothing you have to plan, by the way, just plan have those friends. But what about those five friends that you have in this world? Do you have five people that you could call at 3 o'clock in the morning when your car's in the ditch? Or do you have those five people that you could call from the county jail? 
because something went wrong? Or do you have those five friends that you could call and just say, hey, I, I just need somebody to talk to. Friends. You know, you can be in the midst of a lot of people and not have people you can call on. I'm thankful for friends. And I, I count many of you as friends. I hope you are. And family. But we all need friends. You know the way to have a friend? What did I just say? Don't go to jail. Don't go to jail, okay. Do I have five people that will bail me out? Where's the chairman of the deacon? I'm Thank not coming. What's that? I'm not coming. <laughs> Boy, we know who we can count on. Well, I'm glad I know the former police chief here. When I first, when he first started coming to church, I asked him about what if I got caught speeding in Savannah, and he said, "Good luck." <laughs> Didn't be a whole lot of good to know him. But we need those friends, and, and you might say, "Well, I, I don't have them," and, and I've had times. I don't know if you realize when a pastor comes to a new town, I've got a lot of pastor acquaintances. A lot of pastors that I know, but I don't have a lot of close friends among those pastors. And I'm going to preach to myself for a second. A man who finds friends must show himself friendly. That's a problem in the Word of God. If you want friends, you've got to be a friend. If you want somebody to be close to you, you've got to be close to somebody else. But at most funerals, you're going to have family. You're going to have friends. But the most important thing that you need to have to be thankful, the most important thing that you must have evident at your funeral is faith. Faith. One of the hardest things I do is conduct a funeral for someone that I don't know anything about their faith. Now, it's not any skin off of my nose, but I want to be able to give the family comfort and grace and assurance. But if I don't, if, if no one in the family, if no one that is close to the person that died knows whether they had a personal faith in trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior. If it wasn't evident by the way they lived their lives, I can't stand up their lie. I can't stand up there and invent a faith for them. Now I'll say this, you might be the godliest saint in this room, but I can't know you're saved. But I can have some pretty good assurances by the way you live your life. Now listen, the way you live your life doesn't make you saved. But the way you live your life can demonstrate the faith that you have on the inside. Last week when we were preaching in Philippians in the evening service, I, I quoted a verse. We read and talked about a verse that says, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That didn't say work for your salvation. It said work out your salvation, and you can't work it out unless you have it in. But every one of us ought to be working out our salvation so people can see the light of Jesus in our life. Amen. See, because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Jesus, to God, he must believe that He exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Without faith, we've got to have faith, folks. We've got to have faith. And at the very end of your life, the most important thing that you must have is know that you have that faith in trust in Jesus Christ. 
See Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. We'll look at the two, and I'll quote the third word. It's by grace, God's mercy, that we're saved through what? Faith. And, and, and that means that we're not saved by works. It says, and, and this is not from yourselves. It, salvation is, is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You know, Tommy's a pretty good fellow here. He didn't think so. Uh, I mean, he's a sinner too, you know. If you want to ask about his sins, talk to his wife. She'll, she'll talk to Loretta, she'll tell you. Tommy, I mean, I'm sorry you can't get, get in on your good works. And you sure can't get in on your looks. <laughs> Me neither. See, that's not going to get us there. Without faith, by grace you're saved through faith. This is not something you conjure up at God's gift to say you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But we're not saved only to go to heaven. We're saved to serve. Amen. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in this. God has saved us to serve Him. So let me ask you this question. By the way, I only got two amens on that. God has saved us to serve Him. Amen. That's better. You see, if we can't say amen, then you don't have to say amen. I can preach without you saying amen. I'll preach stronger if you don't say amen. <laughs> Y'all hungry, aren't you? <laughs> Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, hey, can you do a little inventory of your life right now? Can you just picture for a moment it's the end of your life? You don't know when that's going to happen. We have some nonagenarians in this room. You know what a nonagenarian is? Anybody can tell me what a nonagenarian is? You're 90 years plus. Is there anybody willing to raise their hand and say, I'm 90 years plus? Anybody in the room? I know we got one here. You're not 90 years plus. There's one back there. Anybody else 90 years plus? Guess what, bitch? That's your, you're the one and only. Now, ward your close. You're 89? 89. 89. He's going to get there. I believe he will. Let me give you a guarantee for everybody who's 90 years plus. You're going to die. Well, that's good news, isn't it? You're going to die and we don't know when. Your chances of dying are sooner rather than later. But guess what? Who's in their 20s here? Anybody in their 20s? Anybody? I love 20s. 20s, there you go. Oh, I'm sure you have that Several. Praise the Lord. How about 30s? We got any 30 somethings here? I love that looking way back there all right. Guess what? You're going to die too. Boy, you're full of good news today, preacher. <laughs> and we don't know when. So we need to be ready. I don't want to forget the 40s. How many are in your 40s here today? Oh, I love to see those 40s. Amen. Just remember, Brent. Just remember, 40s, 40s the new 30. <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, okay, who do we have that's 50 or above? Raise your hand. That's the majority of the congregation. Okay. Your chances of dying are sooner rather than later. But you know, it how about under 20? Anybody under 20 here? I'm going to tell you something. I am blessed to see all of these younger folks in the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's important you're here. You need to be here. Because the rest of us, those of us 50 and over, <laughs> we're going to leave sooner rather than later. You say, well, that's awfully morbid, Pastor. I just want you to think about this. Today, just today, can you be thankful for friends? Think about friends. And if you don't have any, make some. Look at that person next to you and say, will you be my friend? Will you be my friend? 
And if you couldn't thank God for your faith because you're really not sure you have it, the Bible says, as many as received him, Jesus, and then gave you the power to become the children of God to those who believe on his name. Have you placed your faith and trust in Jesus as your only hope for heaven? If not, do it right now. Call upon God because the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So say something like this to God. God, I know I'm a sinner, but I need Jesus. And right now I believe he died and rose again for me. And I'm trusting Jesus to get me to heaven. I've never done it before, but I want to do it right now. <laughs> Be the most important decision you'll ever make. If you'd like to do that, we'd rejoice with you. Would you let me know by lifting up your hand and putting it back down and say, Pastor Don, pray for me. I'm asking Jesus to be my Savior today. Is there anyone? Right now. God bless you. Thank you. So up your hand and put it back down. Between you and God, but we want to rejoice with you. Is there anyone else? I may not see your hand, but God sees your heart. If you're trusting Jesus as Savior, take the next step. Not to be saved, but because you are. And come to the altar and say, I want to publicly say that I've asked Jesus to be my Savior. And I want to follow Him <coughs> in believer's baptism. And I want to be a part of the fellowship. And maybe you're here today and you, you have received Christ and you are a believer and you've been baptized. And you just want to become a part of this church, moving either your letter or coming by statement of faith. Or maybe you've never been baptized, you're a believer, but you'd like to publicly identify today that Christ is your Savior and you want to follow Him. We invite you to come during this invitation. Father, I pray you bless this time. Help each person that has a decision that they need to make to not be afraid to make it. Maybe somebody will come with them down the aisle so they can publicly acknowledge their faith in Christ. Help those that uh, make decisions, help every one of us to decide that family and friends and faith 
are so important and help us to make them a priority of what we're thankful for in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand together for this hymn of invitation. If God has spoken to your heart, you come. Right now, step out. If you're planning to come and be a part of the fellowship, now's the time. Come on now. be seated for just a moment. I've just discovered a different kind of election. Brother Robbie is electing people to be in the front of the line. God bless you, brother. Thank you for helping out those that are a little slower. Need some help. That's fine. fine. Anybody want to pay, they'll be nice. <laughs> but I want the rest of the congregation to meet Robert Hauser, and we call him Howie. Howie is coming. He's a friend of Christine. Is that okay if I say that? Friend of Christine Stewart, yeah. And uh, she's coming by statement of faith and wants to become a part of our church. He's been baptized as a believer. Would you welcome Howie into our church? <laughs> I'm going to do this for Howie. I'm going to bring you back there where my wife and I stand. Usually we have you stand here at the front. But that wouldn't be fair because they all want to go that way. <laughs> so as they go and get in line, you can shake their hand and... and, and uh, Howie uh, has been coming faithfully, coming to Sunday school, and we're thankful for him being here. So praise the Lord for bringing Howie in today. Uh, where's Michael? Yeah. Where's Michael? 151. 151. Oh, my. No pie in the face today. But you know what? That's everybody in the room. And then there's more back in the kitchen and downstairs. 100, 170. 100 what? 70. 171. So I've got to tell you this story before we go back there. He said, I went and looked for a cheap coconut cream pie last night, and I couldn't, because I said, if it's going to go in my face, I want it to be a cheap one. And I couldn't find one. But I bought a nice one, and it's back there, and there's a lemon meringue pie that will not have to die, because it will be eaten, because nobody throws it in the face. That's all right. That's good. Let's stand together as we sing God. Let's America. 